From kindergarten until graduation, a U.S. kid spends over 10,000 hours inside school classrooms that often look something like this. That's like 7% of your entire life stuck cooped up inside. Imagine instead being taught outside, no matter the season, rain or shine. In the early 1900s, that wasn't just a fantasy. It was a choice people made to keep kids healthy. Since we're still in the midst of our own respiratory disease pandemic, now's a good time to ask, why not teach school outside? My name is Christina Berge. I'm an evolutionary biologist, not a historian but I do teach a class indoors during a respiratory pandemic, so this topic has been on my mind. This video is also brought to you by the cold I currently have, which is why I'm not turning on my camera for this week's video. This is what I look like when I'm healthy. One of the best ways to not die of respiratory diseases like tuberculosis or influenza is to avoid breathing the same air that other humans have recently breathed. This can be hard to do inside schools where students have to be near one another and near the teacher. About 100 years ago, tuberculosis, aka consumption or tysis, killed one out of every seven people in Europe and the US. There's a reason for the joke that if a character in Victorian literature coughs in Act 1, <coughs> she'll be dead by Act 3. TB killed a lot of people. Back then, people didn't know tuberculosis was caused by a bacterium. They thought it was caused by a lack of fresh air and sunlight and spending too much time indoors in stuffy rooms. Ever since Hippocrates, he of oath fame, people had thought that a miasma or bad polluted air caused many diseases. In fact, the name for malaria reflects this same idea. It's from medieval Italian mala meaning bad and aria meaning air because it was thought to be caused by noxious swamp winds. Based on all this, in 1904, the town of Charlottenburg in Germany decided to start an open air classroom, a Waldschule or forest school to help delicate children who were at high risk of tuberculosis. The concept spread to the rest of Europe where it became very popular. It also took hold in the United States. This is my favorite of the old photos. This one is of a classroom on a ferry in New York City from around 1915. You can see the Brooklyn Bridge and the Woolsworth Building, which would have been the tallest building in the world at the time. I live in an apartment in New York City, so pretty far from nature, but I'm recording this from my getaway house up in the mountains. The history of this place, the Catskills north of New York City, owes a lot to the idea people had that fresh mountain air was good for health. In fact, a short drive from here, there used to be a sanatorium, like a fancy hospital spa, built in 1896 for the treatment of tuberculosis. Wealthy people would go there for open air treatment, which was the cutting edge for TB. The sanatorium was named for a fellow named Alfred Lebius Loomis, who had become convinced that mountain air had put his own tuberculosis into remission during a vacation in the Adirondacks. He succumbed to his tuberculosis before the sanatorium bearing his name could be finished, but you can see his vision realized in this farmhouse on the property, which was opened up to let fresh air in. Here's another one of the buildings with the huge windows where patients with tuberculosis could convalesce. These open-air classrooms and open-air hospitals for preventing and treating tuberculosis were based on a faulty premise. The air itself wasn't causing the disease, a pathogen was. But weirdly enough, we'd probably have done better in some ways during this pandemic if we still thought that diseases were caused by a miasma. I know there are huge logistical challenges like inclement weather and like bugs that make it tricky to shift school and other activities outdoors but it might do us good to take some cues from the people who were thinking outside the box in 1896. thanks for watching if you like listening to me a non-historian talk about history be sure to check out the video where i walk the length of manhattan twice and talk about interesting factoids along the way you can also subscribe for the typical evolutionary biology and public health content posted weekly hopefully by next week i'm healthy enough to show my face or at least sound like i'm not dying of tb